Hey there, it's Mike Oming. I uh doing a little quick warm-up sketch of Cave Carson. And uh, I thought for a change I'd actually kind of talk about what to do in a draw. You'll see on my YouTube channel lots of different um, videos. Most of them are silent, and then I throw some music on it just in case, you know, whatever. Um, jazz it up a little. Uh, but this one I'll talk a little bit about how I go about drawing something. So usually it starts with a really light figure work like this. Um, almost always start with the head, kind of figure out what the basic shape is. Um, I want to draw a cave and a sort of, well he's not much of a fist fighter guy. He is, you know, kind of old school 1950s, 1960s action explorer. So uh, I'm going to draw him here with his fists up. Like he's ready to take on some action. Um, you see as I sketch out here, when I'm looking for the basic shapes, you know, years and years of drawing, I've got my proportions down pretty good. I mean, I still have trouble with it, and sometimes I have to fix it in Photoshop and stuff. I already tell his head's pretty big, and I might have to, if this was to be a finished, you know, DC drawing, I'd probably want to make his head a little bit smaller. But that's something I tend to do. I just draw big heads, probably because I have a huge, huge cranium. <laughs> um, so I like to draw really light here. This is just a sketchbook. I prefer my sketchbooks to have um, some pretty thick paper. This one is uh, 110 pounds. Um, but my favorite sketchbook is, I got it over here. It is this guy, uh, and it is 130 pounds, which basically means it's pretty thick paper, like it's almost Bristol board. Um, but that's pretty expensive, so um, this sketchbook I use, um, so it's it's not as thick, but um, you know it's still pretty thick. Uh, but I, you know, I'll use this kind of sketchbook for things that I use commonly, like um, layout pages. It's also slightly larger than that other book. I can't really seem to find a 140 pound, 130 pound sketchbook um, in a larger size. Cave's eyes, he's an older dude, so I kind of emphasize this thing. The eyelids droop, or that kind of space over your eyelids, between your eyelids and your um, eyebrows over the years. They just either get puffy from age and drinking or just age. Um, so that's one way I can kind of help make him look a little bit older. Um, have, I've found a lot of fun with his hair. Um, his hair and beard are kind of this puffy shape, almost like a cloud. Um, so I don't really get in there to do definition on them. I, I like just the shape itself can identify it. And then hopefully as time goes by, people will start to get used to that the shape of his head and shape of his hair. And almost like Batman's chest, like all you need is a silhouette and you'll be able to see the bat, you know exactly who it is. What I'm hoping is over time, people will see this shape of his hair and uh, probably the cross hatching on his shirt. And you'll be able to know immediately that it's him. Pardon me as I drink more coffee. My hands are a little shaky because I've had too much, but sometimes you need a lot of coffee in the morning to get started. Um, hands are tricky. Again, break it down into a shape. Usually a fist. It's just kind of this almost um, spatula-like shape to it. Here I'm indicating the fingers. One, two, three, four. Yes, I count because I've drawn too many fingers several times. Usually because also, I try not to think too hard while I'm drawing because <laughs> uh, I find that will get in the way. I often freeze up or yeah, the work gets stiff if I'm thinking too hard about it. So a lot of times I like to listen to something while I'm working. Many of you know through my uh, Twitter channels and stuff. Wait, he doesn't have a tie. Um, my Twitter channels and stuff. I like to listen to Jimmy Church a lot. He's a radio program. Um, and his late night conspiracy, UFO, weird stuff, 
But Jimmy, unlike a lot of this, these other guys, are just you know, really open-minded, lets people talk, speak their mind, and it's fun. Um, I draw a lot of inspiration from that stuff. Um, a lot of people wonder why I like it. Part of it, I'm very interested in people's mindsets who are into the conspiracy culture and stuff. Um, but also, there's just a lot of great ideas that are just floating around out there. Um, so when I listen to programs like Jimmy Church or Coast to Coast, i um, always got my ear open for other concepts. Ah, oh, shit. I'm out of lead. All right, no. No, I'm not. Sometimes it has trouble. Um, this I find interesting. Gerard, um, Gerard Way, you may have heard of him. When we're talking about um, Cave, originally I drew him more barrel-chested, almost like when I drew Sex and Hail for um, um, Valve Comics. Um, but uh, he wanted to be a little out of shape. You know, this is a guy who's kind of been behind the desk for a while, as he said. So it's kind of fun drawing a little punch on him on his stomach. And I can't tell through my camera. I try to set it up so that it doesn't distort too much from the angle of the page, but you can kind of see here how it's angled. So his head's gonna look even bigger. It's slightly out of proportion, but I'll, I'll scan this in at the end so you can really see it. So this is almost as much as I do for uh, pencils, really. And right here, I'll just go right into inks. One of my favorite brushes is this pen brush called uh, Karatuki. I'm sure I'm not saying it correctly. Um, it's got a great tip that lasts probably about a, three weeks to a month, um, which is really long life for a, for a pen. Um, but it can go even further if you don't mind it being a little chunkier. Um, one of the things I like is I can take this out and refill it. I use a, um, a syringe that I just brought off of um, Amazon. I got like a box of them. And you kind of have to play around with the syringes to get them the worky way you want them to, but, uh, but they will. I'm going to have a black background in here, so I'm going to clean off the edge of my brush kind of near his face. I shouldn't start with his face because I really should wait until my hand uh, has got the feel for the brush, and especially with the coffee shakes. But, um, fuck it. I kind of start with the face because it's always the focus of the drawing. Um, kind of pins the viewer's eyes down to the middle where you want them to look. You have to work with the composition on that, obviously. Um, a lot of times when I'm inking, I know that later in Photoshop, I'm going to cover up a lot of this line work um, with another layer that um, I do basically kind of like white out on. Um, so on that layer, I'll take off lines that I don't want to connect so that it's more of a solid shape instead of lines. Um, uh, there are other artists out there who do that really, really, really well and much more naturally than I do. Like I know uh, um, Chris Samney definitely can just do it right on the page. Uh, Victor Santos is another master of that. Uh, Ron Salas is really, really good at just making these solid shapes on on the page while they're inking. Um, for whatever reason, even though we're in a similar school to each other of art, I just, I don't know. I have trouble doing that. Um, so that's what Photoshop is for. <laughs> I do a lot of fixing in Photoshop. Sometimes I rely on it too much and I end up making more work for myself later. While I'm drawing the page, I think I'm not. I'm drawing the page, I'm thinking, oh yeah, let's fix some Photoshop, but, you know, uh, ask anybody who works in film and stuff, like fixing things in, in post or, you know, counting on post to fix things. It's really just a mistake and you're gonna create more time, more work for yourself. So I, I attempt to do as much as I can on the page, but sometimes, you know, you're just overwhelmed with work and you're like, oh crap, I'm almost done with this page, it's near the end of the night, fuck it, I'll finish it in Photoshop. One of the things I'm doing here is there's going to be a black background and I'm going to put a lot of his his fists and stuff here in silhouette. I always like that, you know, high contrast stuff. So I look for different ways to to do or to indicate the, the contrast. What else? Um...
I found that drawing collars is fun. <laughs> Shirt collars. Um, especially on a character where it becomes part of his costume. You have a lot of fun with the shade in here, and definitely in, like I said, waiting some of this out later on would be a lot of fun. Uh, folds and clothes. I wish I was better at it. I think I do a fine job, but it's not a great job. I'm always in awe of people who just have a more natural understanding of it. I guess I should, you know, just practice more of that in my sketchbook. But I often have problems uh, when I try to relax with my sketchbook. I end up just figuring out, well, shit, I should just be doing work instead of figuring this out, or work instead of doing a warm-up sketch. Like, oh, it doesn't take that long to warm up. Um, so yeah, there's lots of things I should do, but it's hard to just find the time or to, you know, weigh it against the importance of just meeting my deadlines and getting things done. Uh, it's also one of the reasons why you rarely see me at comic book shows anymore. Um, I always looked for reasons to go and I had lots of fun and stuff, but uh, ultimately it kills the deadlines. Um, not as young as I used to be, so you know, going to these shows and stuff exhausts me now. Um, it used to be I would drive back from like mid Ohio Con or some you know long ass trip like that. I was in Jersey, and then I could come home, unpack my bags, and start drawing again. Now I come home, I collapse and uh, close the door, and never try to go outside again, and I'm just tired. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd rather meet my deadlines than go to conventions. And, uh, and frankly, if I was an editor, it'd drive me nuts going to a convention and seeing all the people who, um, you know, their books are late. <laughs> you may be waiting on some of them and then you see them at a con having fun. Uh, my conscience is just, uh, just bother me too much. <laughs> um, especially with powers, you know, being never on time. It's just, it's on its own time, you know, um, Brian and I have two different schedules and trying to match them up isn't as easy as it used to be. Um, rambling. Eyes. It seems like I can never learn enough about drawing eyes. So eyebrows are a little weird here. Um, there's just so much to, to learn, especially when you're drawing, for me, in this cartoony style. That's, well, it's cartoony, it's not completely cartoony, so it's not like I follow the, f there's a certain formula, especially for that sort of adventure style that I started out with here um, for eyes that you could just follow. But then they just look like everybody else's eyes. Um, I also like in that cartoony style for people to find their own version of it. Um, Darwin Cook, rest his soul, um, while he came out of that school, definitely made it his own. Um, and maybe some laymen would look at his and Bruce Timm's work and not be able to tell the difference, but um, I think anybody who's developed a discerning eye could definitely see what he did and how he made it his own. And hopefully I'm doing the same thing. Um, in fact, I'm sure I am because um, as much as I try to do the Batman Adventure style from time to time, every now and then I'll try. I just can't get on my... <laughs> So um, that either means I'm lame as an artist or my personal vision, whatever, uh, just gets in the way of me drawing that stuff correctly or on model. All right, here we get into his hair, like I said, kind of this like cloudy shape. Um, then I like to put, I don't do much rendering, meaning like there won't be a lot of this kind of stuff on the page. I used to a lot of that, a lot of feathering. Um, just small feathering. Uh, a lot of it I got from my Mignola influence, which I wouldn't call it feathering the way he did it, but you know, Mike would do um, these sort of jagged little lines with a pen versus a brush. Um, so anyway, um, I used to do a lot of that, but now I just try and do mostly solid shapes and only occasionally find a place that really needs just a little bit of a bump for depth and stuff. These little lines here, I like doing this. this is something that I, I kind of got from Jeff Smith of Bone, which I've been employing a lot more, which is these very, very little texture lines, very thin. I, I, they add a certain amount of energy. 
you can kind of subtly create direction with it in the composition. Um, not, not a lot, but definitely some. You kind of guide the line for the shape and the form of stuff. So this is mostly done. I mean, typically I would just erase this and then fill in the blacks in Photoshop because as you're gonna see, this is time consuming, man. <laughs> hate, hate, hate filling in black. It just takes, you just sit here and do nothing but just color in the lines. Um, but it has to be done, so let's do it real quick. As quickly as I can without boring you. Oh, shit. Sorry about that. So, I just use a regular watercolor brush for this stuff. This is just some, this is a Winsor Newton, but it wasn't very expensive. Um, the ink I like to use is a Talons ink. It's actually a um, tattoo ink that uh, Canson has adapted um, to an ink that they sell. Um, although I can't remember if I'm buying directly from Canson or from a tattoo company. Um, because I've got like a really, really large jar that I ordered. Uh, is it around here? Yeah, here it is. Actually, my wife, Takisoma, ordered it. Um, so it's this big. Yeah, this is put out by Talons. And uh, yeah, it's basically a tattoo ink. And uh, the reason we use it is, A, somebody from Canson was trying it out at one point and sent me some and I fell in love with it, and um, it's, it, it spreads nice. A lot of times when you get these really, really thick, these really, really dark blacks, they're just too thick, and, and it's almost like a lacquer or something. This is nice and smooth, pardon me. So it spreads really well, and I use this both in my brush, the one that I just showed you earlier, the, the one that I, you know, uh, refill myself, um, and then I use it straight out of the bottle, or I put it into another bottle. I'm also always trying out and testing different little caps and little teeny tiny glass bottles that I find at like craft stores and stuff, trying to figure out something to hold other than a big ink bottle like this, which ends up um, you know, getting chunks on the top and stuff. Uh, and then those chunks can get into the ink, and you know, you, next thing you know, you got this little blotch, or you go to erase it, and then suddenly get this big black smear going across the page. Uh, so yeah, so one of the things I tried is I got this glass vial, and uh, I fill that up with ink. So sometimes I'll hold this and then use that, but it still feels like not quite right yet. So I'm still looking for something perfect. And again, right here, what you see is why all the black on my pages, I almost always fill them in Photoshop so I can get the page done. And then at some other point, myself or even my wife, Taki, will uh, fill in black on pages because time. <laughs> oh, this is already boring me. Also, because I'm recording a video here, I'm not listening to music or listening to some podcast or some fun YouTube video or whatever. Um, usually that's something that I do. Lots of audiobooks. I've been listening to a lot of uh, John Ronson lately. He's one of my favorites. Um, he uh, wrote The Men Who Stare at Goats, which was made into a pretty decent film. Uh, he does great conspiracy stuff called Them, where he just hung out with extremists and conspiracy nuts, and it was pretty amazing. Um, and I love his point of view on it. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, filling in black. Filling in black. <laughs> I guess I could also use a bigger brush in this for filling in the black. It'll hold more in the, the head of the brush and make this a little less time consuming. But I wasn't really prepared. I just wanted to hop in, do a quick video real quick for you guys. Um, one of the other things that I do in Photoshop uh, for Cape Carson, specifically for the character of Cape Carson, is his shirt. Um, 
I draw his sort of cross-hatched uh, pattern shirt on another layer in Photoshop. Um, that way, n shit, I just blopped it there. Uh, Nick Filardi, uh, amazing colorist, knew my joke is like my second wife. Um, he colors all my work from Powers and Victories and all kinds of stuff, and now Cape Carson and stepping up to a whole new game that's going to just blow people away at what he's doing in this book. But anyway, um, so I draw the crosshatch lines, which I'll do in a sec, in Photoshop on another layer. That way you can do them as a color hold or change the colors of the lines and stuff. And um, He's doing some really cool stuff with it. He's also doing this great work with using textures and zipper tone patterns. And so this is going to be a really unique looking book. I mean, even at um, Young Animal, which has a very sort of art forward, illustrative kind of vibe to most of the books, um, I think Cave will stand out in its own way, hopefully. Especially because there's so many great artists involved. So a little bit intimidating, even for somebody like me who's been around for quite a bit. So hopefully we get to stand on our own and represent the imprint really well. I also keep a bottle of water like this for my ink next to me. Um, the reason why I use a bottle is because it's got a lid on it so I can easily cover it up and not worry about shit me or the cats spilling it. I just said shit because I accidentally splattered some uh, ink wash onto the page, but it didn't make it onto the main art. Ugh, filling in black, I hate it. it. Takes so much time. What a waste. Anyway, um, and now I also have to deal with the fact that some of the ink is still wet as I'm going to do these final steps, which will be his plaid shirt. And when I'm doing these lines on a plaid shirt, uh, well, I'm not being exactly true to the shape of his body outline and stuff. I'm, I'm trying to indicate the shape a little bit so you can see, you know, it's going with the, the cone-like shape of his arms here and stuff. So that's a little too close to there. So what I'm going to do is kind of cheat a little bit. Ugh, not liking this. Now he's looking like Spider-Man's outfit. That's another reason why it's great to do his outlines in Photoshop because I can just change it really easy. Um, also his lines seem to be double lines like this. So. Let's do that. Bada bing. Bada bang. Yeah, this shoulder looks very Spider Man like. Well, hopefully, laying down these double lines will change that. Yeah, that was a bad choice. done here. And one of my favorite things about Cave is I gave him these slightly furry forearms. Furry is the right. Uh, hair? Hairy forearms? It's still morning for me. Alright, so try and lift it up so it's not at an angle. That's basically it. I'll sign it over here. And uh, that, well, he's a needed eraser. I'm going to erase slightly around his face. But I'm going to leave some of the pencil lines in here because it kind of looks cool on a sketch. It lets people know that it was a sketch too. I mean, obviously, because it's going to be ripped out of a, a thing. But Long story short, blah, 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 there it is. And um, if you want this, I'm going to put it up on my blog, uh, which you can find 
through my Twitter account, Facebook, and stuff like that. I think it's just, I don't, I don't remember if it's Oming Blogspot or Blogspot Oming, something like that. Um, anyway, I sell a bunch of art there. Mostly all that, well, pretty much actually all that art goes to helping out um, my uncle and um, my grandmother-in-law, um, both who are elderly and, you know, they have different different needs and stuff. So all that money just goes to that. Um, add a little tiredness to him. He's old. <laughs> and uh, that is that. So uh, that's how I go about doing a little sketch. It's not that much different really from how I draw a page, except obviously without the storytelling stuff. So I'll have to do a video on that at some point. And uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you like Cave Carson when it comes out in um, the fall at some point. And uh, that's it. I'm going to go back to drawing the Cave Carson. And Powers is still going on, still drawing Powers. Got some other projects going to be uh, developing slowly over time. And um, that's about it right now. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.